Let's mosey on into Undead or Live where I'm going to paint the gruesomest miniature I ever did. Hey there miniature painting fans, I hope you're having a good day, so welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, hello! Uh, we're painting the Wendigo from Zombicide's Undead or Live's Dead West box, who was primed in a skeleton bone, and I'm going to be using some speed paints in the old airbrush, and I actually got myself a brand new airbrush because the other one just kept clogging no matter what I did, I don't think it was good for what I was trying to do, I mean it was a cheap brush, uh, airbrush, so you know what, I just decided to get myself an, another one a little bit better, and wow, what a difference, the spray, the nozzle, everything, anyways, I don't want to get too much into the airbrush, we're using some murder scene on this big giant miniature from Undead or Alive's Dead West box, this is a stretch goal, and I didn't want to do just what the image was showing, which was just pretty much all skeleton. I wanted this thing to have flesh on it left, like I wanted to have just the most gruesome looking I could do. And then I'm using some pallet bone here on the bone parts that are left. And you know what, whenever I was doing the airbrush, if I missed areas, I was like, this is great. It's like there's still bones protruding out of the muscle flesh areas and having this pallet bone go on certain areas was mixing into the murder scene. Uh, it's just just fantastic to paint by the way great job doing it I mean it was just, I find I did a great job doing it uh, charred bone now what I'm doing is just some, some highlights here this is an air paint I've been really becoming accustomed to using air paints for uh, glazing or layering I find that they're the perfect consistency you don't have to water them down uh, they're not thick at all I mean they're meant for an airbrush right so they're meant to flow really nicely and what's cool is as they dry they seem to like uh, blend into the color underneath them so it gives it an even more realistic look to them uh, I don't know if uh, why it does this but anyways this is the longest part on this miniature because I go around looking for any kind of like protruding bone or anything that could look like bone or skeleton parts and uh, anyways I just had so much fun um, painting this guy up I searched on the, the, the nice web there that we have access to looking for inspiration and then I fell upon someone who did sort of like a fleshy look as well and I was just like yeah you know what that would just be amazing to do something like that so and the speed paint in an airbrush is just amazing because as you can see like certain areas get really dark if you put a little bit more on it if you go like a quick pass through it's just going to be nice and light uh, you know if you did a zenithal highlight or even like a I was thinking on top of the skeleton bone of doing dry brush of white and at one point I was almost thinking also if I could find a way to do like a webbing effect of dry brush so like I was looking into the wet towels and stuff like that that are dried and you stretch to make like I've seen people make um, marble tiles I was gonna do this on this guy so put this like wet nap or whatever that's really dry stretch it out to make it look like a spider web put it on top of it and then respray with white through it with the airbrush and hopefully we create like a like a sort of like lined effect everywhere like sort of marbleish and then when I would have done the airbrushing of the speed paints that those areas would have been more bright but then it would look more like veins and more like cracked bones I don't know it would have been cool but I couldn't find that kind of uh, tissue or whatever I just couldn't find anything that was I tried drying some up I had at home I had some old baby wipes from way back when uh, they were already dried up but I was hoping I could stretch it, but they would just rip anyway so that's all the, the uh, charred bone there now we're putting some bleached bone on the top of the forehead of this thing and just some of the tips here make it look like they're more worn out these parts of the bones are more bleached as the color goes for again this is another air paint and it's the same one from the, the triad. This is the high tone, sort of uh, the highlight part of the color triad. I didn't use the middle one because it's skeleton bone, which is what I had originally on there. So I figured there was no point in doing a third area or third like layout of this paint. Uh, their color triads are great, but sometimes I find their colors are a little too close together from the base, the mid-tone, and the highlights. So anyways, now to really make this miniature disgusting looking, I went with some glistening blood and dry brushed it on to everywhere pretty much. Not all, I'll try not to hit the bones too much, but I did a little bit here and there just to make it more gruesome, but it gives it a nice shine to it. it makes the like the skin look like it's still fleshy and bloody and disgusting and anyways, just a great miniature to paint. I hope you guys have this one to paint. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this. And there you have it, the Wendigo from Undead or Alive, the Dead West box. So this is a stretch goal box. I hope you enjoyed these videos, guys. Hit that like button. You guys voted for this one. Uh, I'll be putting up another miniature against the other three who lost real soon. So keep an eye out for that. Go check my community tab out, and we'll see you all in the next one.